So, map number two of this best of three and spawning up in the top left hand position of Deadless Point. Representing Vega Squadron, none other than Romson. And his opponent down in the bottom right, the Blue Terran, it's Dragon. Now Dragon is currently down a map and in a best of three that's an awkward position to be in. Because if he loses this next game, he's out. Of course, that's never what you want. Romson, on the other hand, he just has to win this or the next game and he advances into the semi-finals and that is going to be where he wants to be. Dragon opening up with a very early refinery here, so this is likely to result in there being a very fast factory. Reaper plays tend to be along the lines of you'll see just a, a barracks down then the gas and that's what we saw last game out of Dragon even though he went for that double reaper. The double reaper was super effective though, he was able to take down a huge number of workers early on but unfortunately Romson did some great counter damage with a couple of oracles that continued on. Dragon then went for a widow mine drop, did some more SCB damage but overall it was Romson with his oracles that just did a devastating amount to Dragon's income. So that's really the story of map one. Map number two. For the moment, we know what Dragon's going to be doing, at least roughly. Robinson, on the other hand, still all the world open to him. As in map number one, a lot comes down to how many probes he puts in gas. If he puts down three in each straight away, that means that he's going very tech heavy. Two in each means that he's still going to be teching, which is a little bit later. Probably going to try and secure up a natural base a tad sooner. So cybernetic score will be added in. Romson has shown against Terran quite a favoritism in order to go for those oracles. He builds the starport, uh, Stargate as well, down at the natural base, and that's very unusual. But it makes it hard to scan, and that was one of the reasons the oracles were so effective in the previous game. Because actually Dragon, even despite using the oracles effectively, scanning repeatedly, wasn't able to get that scout on the Stargate. So Reactor coming down, Factory also on its way through, they should get switched and Hellions will be en route. Two of the SCVs pulled out of the gas there and that means that this is unlikely to be a blue flame build or anything like that. This is literally just for a lot of Hellions to be coming out. And Hellions are quite good and deadless and that's because it's so difficult in order to wall off here even after the change and it's been made smaller. But also Hellions can sneak on round and deal, they've got a lot of area in order to use their mobility effectively and that can make it more difficult to deal with. So, Hellion production should start once this factory is finished, it will get switched over to that reactor. And then it's really up to Dragon to see where he goes from here. Most likely it's going to be a command centre, although he hasn't yet started one, which does surprise me because he's got a decent amount of minerals banked up. He could definitely be looking to start one fairly soon. Over at Romson's side, he's up at 5 probes in gas, he's about to go and secure his natural base with the probe he's just pulled down while also pressuring across the map with one Zeta, one Stalker, and one Mothership Core. And with that, he's able to deal quite a nice amount of damage, going to identify these Hellions super early on, and can actually start chipping away at them. The problem is the Hellions are a lot faster than this force, and there isn't enough energy for a mass recall or anything like that. And therefore, we will see Romson have to deal with these Hellions back at home. Warpgate Tech also isn't finished, so what he's opting to do is just build three pylons at the top of his ramp, preventing the Hellions from getting through and just buying himself a bit more time. One of those will likely get cancelled, doesn't have to worry too much, but because those two Hellions are out, Romson is completely aware that actually Dragon is going to have little, if anything, in order to defend against this. So two Marines are all that are down the field at the moment, a time warp being utilised as well. The Stalker is unfortunately pinned down into position by those SCVs, but still, nice damage done. The Widow might actually deal with a lot of damage to Dragon's own SCV count. And so, with that, the Zeta just going to be chasing down, trying to get a little bit more damage. Going head-to-head -head with that Marine will kill it, but the SCVs are able to be heroes and get the kill there too. A couple of additional gateways being added on. Dragon down, though, to only 16 workers, up against the 26 probes that Romson currently has. And Romson is also looking to go into DTs. DTs are a nice choice here. And the reason DTs are such a good choice is because he knows he's delayed this natural command center. So, the second orbit command isn't going to be anytime soon. But he's also done a lot of damage to the SCV line with that poke with the Zealot Stalker and Mothership Core. And that means that Dragon has to spend 
all of his energy on mules just to keep in this game economically and therefore won't have scans. He's also going to want to try and cut corners so things like missile turrets may get skipped. And that's just another benefit of these DTs where they can be potentially very effective. Photon cannons are coming down in the middle line. This is just in preparation in case there's another one of those Widow Mine drops that we saw on map number one from Dragon. And that's quite a likely occurrence to be coming out here and it is exactly what we are seeing. Four Marines, one Widow Mine making their way across. The probe going to be sneaking his way through, going to try and get a proxy pylon up just to allow those ZTs to get going. Force field being used just to pin these Hellions in place. The drop heading in towards the main, of course. The Photon Cannon grants detection and deals damage, which is very nice. But more importantly, Dragon is going to be able to scout the Dark Shrine. He backs straight away, but now he knows that's coming. Should start at least banking up energy for that scan. Also getting down the engineering bay ready for a missile turret if needed. The medevac is going to go down. That's a nice pick off. Takes quite significant losses. The engineering bank nearly done, a lot of marines sitting down there at the moment. Notice though Romson not yet opting to try and get down any DTs. There's also the wall off coming out here with a second engineering bay and also the orbital command. So it's very unlikely that a DT would be able to do any damage. Romson morphing in or warping in just the single one at the moment to go and take a little peek to see what's coming down. There's also energy for two scans so it would be highly unlikely any damage would be done. So Romson's still forced a reaction out of his opponent. Delays that engineering bay as well, which is always good. Ideally, he'd want to force a scan, but with the missile turret coming down, that isn't something we're going to see. Don't actually know if this DT is out of range of the detector of that missile turret. No, it seems that no, it isn't, so going to have to back away. Uh, a second DT is in position. Those marines would have to be careful if they came down the ramp. The robotic facility coming through and the plus one armor on its way out for the Protoss player, as he brings a couple of stalkers and a sentry across the map as well. He's up by just shy of 20 supply, which is a nice position to be in. But most of that supply is actually coming from the work account, although some of it is still in a slightly better army supply for Romson. An Archon has been made. Zealots coming from behind. This proxy pylon, unbeknown to Dragon at the moment. This is allowing Romson to come from behind, trap his opponent's marines in a very awkward spot. The Zealots not trading that well on the Archon, getting a little bit mixed up with where he should be going. So isn't going to be coming in this fight as of yet. But this is still a great win. DT's on their way through too. And with all of this, Dragon is looking to be in a very, very awkward position. Because an emergency build of a wall off is never what you want. SCV's getting pulled, but of course you can't repair buildings that are not yet finished. The supply depot's still trying to get up the Archons. Getting a few good shots off. If the SCV's are able to finish these supply depots, it does massively help. Because you can start repairing them. But a lot of SCV's now getting taken down. The Archons are chipping away. The front Archon taking actually quite a sizable amount of damage, which isn't ideal. Will get killed most likely if Romson doesn't back out. Losing an Archon is never really what you want. They are quite tanky, but it's not worth it when you're just taking apart a few units. Romson though, he's up by 23 workers. That's a big lead. And he's trapped Dragon on what he thinks is one base, but it actually isn't. Dragon has got a third up. We're waiting now to see what these stalkers are. Oh, the stalkers do know about it, so never mind. These mules, these poor mules for Dragon, they were a bit of a lifeline. They're going to get taken down. A Dark Templar has also managed to sneak up into the main base. That's frustrating. But it's the lack of these mules that's going to be really hurting Dragon now because he used pretty much all of his Orbit Command energy to cool them down there. And without them, his income is really now in tatters. So he can't even use those mules to try and level things out. The Robotics Bay coming down from Romson as well, so he's preparing himself to transition into Colossi while he takes a third base. It's just finishing off now. So everything really going in the Protoss' player's favour by quite a large margin. Scan coming down just to make sure that there's no Observer. And this is really the first move by Dragon to try and bring himself a little way back into this game. Going for a drop. It's a big risk. It means he's got less to defend with. But it may allow him to do some counter damage and potentially level out this series. And he's got to do something. Because as it stands, he's a long way behind. Even just in the um, worker supply, he's hugely behind. And income makes a massive difference. Look at that. It's over double the income for Robinson in both gas and minerals currently. Robinson's still poking and prodding. His mothership core is not with the army and therefore can't mass recall. But it is in the natural base. So a photon overcharge and a photon cannon should be able to keep most of this back. Good little bit of vision. One of the marines I believe did die and Robinson 
falls back. He's already got one Colossus out, a second one on its way. That tech was scouted. Oh, actually, no, it wasn't. Dragon didn't even manage to see that there was a robotics bay, so doesn't know what's following this up. That is an ideal for him because he's not going to have any way to really deal with it. The one plus side for him is that he does have a decent number of marauders, and for the moment, we don't see extended thermal lance having been started from that robotics bay. As such, marauders equal the range of colossi and can start chipping away at them as quickly as possible. Another little Zeta drop coming through here, or Zeta sneaks on by. Um, they're going to get a couple of worker kills. 23 worker kills in total so far by Wompson. Dragon only managing to kill two in retaliation. And that's really where the discrepancy between their worker counts is becoming so evident in just how many they've lost. More gateways being added in here with the Colossi. Obviously, that's a decent amount of splash with a good number of Dark Templar being warped in as well. That would open up the option for a few Archons. Dragon moving across the map, but without meaning to sound too pessimistic, it's highly unlikely that much damage is going to be achieved with this, because with two Colossi already out, and of course the Archons there, and a good gateway support, it's going to be incredibly challenging for such a small group of infantry to actually do much. Still though, Extended Thermal Lance isn't yet done, so that's going to take some more time, but there's the scan, sees the Colossus, and immediately as those Colossi start hitting, GG is cool. Dragon knows he's not going to be able to stop that. And he's also, just to point out, taking huge damage back at home from the Zealot drop. So nice control there, coming down from the Protoss player to win 2-0 over Dragon and advance forward into the semi-finals.